morning and happy Sunday for all brothers and sisters. Today's service, we grateful for Jesus. We thankful that we can serve our Lord Jesus. And let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for today's blessings, Lord. Today we want to worship you and we want to praise you. We are grateful for every day despite of our world situation, Lord. We can sing, we still can worship you, the King of all kings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
to give our offering but before we give our offering let us pray 
Father God, we thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, for your faithfulness, for your blessing upon us. It is so abundantly. And now we want to give back our love to you with our offering and we want to give with a joyful heart because we know that you love us so much and we love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let us declare our offering. One, two, three. When we bring our offering, we believe that the gates of heaven are open and the blessing of the Lord are poured out. I have a better business, job, and education. Profit, bonus, and assets will be multiplied. God will bring old and new customers to me. All bills will be paid off. I own a house on earth and in heaven. Receiving gifts, surprises, and rewards. A soulmate will be given to those who are single. There is no barren person in our midst and families living in harmony. All enemies, sickness, and loss will be rebuked from our lives, families, jobs, and our business. This is the time to give the offering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, we thank God for his goodness and we thank him for his mercy. We thank him for his love. We thank him for caring for us. And I know that God is faithful. I just want us to lift up our voice wherever we are and begin to bless the name of the Lord this Sunday. Let us appreciate him. Let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the glory. Let's thank him for a better year. Thank him for all what he has done for us last year. Let us appreciate him for the victories, for the success. Let us bless his holy name for all that he has done. Let us thank him for his protection throughout this pandemic. Let us thank him and appreciate the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. Let us bless his holy name. It's worthy. It's worthy. It's worthy. Oh, we worship you. Everyone out there, just lift up your voice and your hands to God and just begin to bless his holy name. Appreciate him. Tell him, Father, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all in Jesus' name. I appreciate God for the opportunity to be here to minister the word of God to you today. And I thank God uh, for the opportunity and the mercy of God and the grace of God that saw us through last year and is the same grace that brought us to this year, 2022. I know that God that started a good work in our lives is able to finish and perfect it. And God will perfect the good work he has started in your life in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen to that? Now today I will be sharing with you briefly a topic, uh, divine testimony. Now uh, to take a critical look at that topic, uh, it is very common word, divine and testimony. It's a very common word that uh, we hear on a daily basis. But even though it's a common word, there is something about it that we need to understand about this same topic, divine testimony. Now, to do justice to that, I would like to open the Bible to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, we'll read from verse 13 to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Now the Bible says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me. This Apostle Paul uh, admonishing us. And in verse 14, he said, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are matured, please, I want you to underline that word matured in your Bible, have the same mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even these things to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, Apostle Paul was giving us an understanding. He wants us to understand something about moving ahead and forgetting all the challenges of the past. You see, there is tendency to begin to bring the things of the past to the present. Bringing the things of the past to the present. Because most of the times, these things, we hardly forget them. Especially those, that, those things that give us um, 
a sleepless night or those things that make us so sorrowful. There is tendency that we don't forget them. We keep them within us. Now, Apostle Paul is saying in, that, in the scripture, he said, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me. Now, if you look at the underline that I said in verse 15, I said, many have matured. Now, Apostle Paul is talking to the church of God that are matured. Apostle Paul is saying, for the matured ones among you, let us learn how to forget all the challenges of the past, all the failures of the past, all the mistakes we have made of the past, even the victory that we made last year. He said, forget about all these things. He said, because there is something that is ahead of you that is far better than all those things that you are still thinking about. Now, the year 2021 has been so challenging to so many of us. And uh, so many things that we planned did not even work out. Why? Because uh, the pandemic and so many things happened to the economy. And it affected us in one way or the other. Now, there is tendency that we'll forget that we'll still carry all those things that happened last year to this year. And Apostle Paul said, I am pressing forward. He said, because there is something greater, something much more better that is ahead of me, which I am pursuing, and I will not allow the mistakes and the challenges of the past to affect my presence. Praise God. Now, he now says that all this I'm saying is to those that are matured, those that know their God. Those that understand spiritual things. He said, those are the people I'm talking to. It's not everyone that I'm talking to. There are some group of people that I'm talking to. And those group of people are those ones that I call the ones with a matured mind. Glory be to God. That is why Apostle Paul is saying it clearly. If you are going through any challenges, he said, it is high time you let it go. You don't bring it to this year. Because it will affect what God wants to do. Now, let me break it down for you, for you to understand very well. Now, there is something about testimony. It's to testify about something. To testify about uh, what has happened or what God has done for you. That is what it means. Or to testify of the truth. But this time, because uh, about Concerning what we are talking about, we are talking about the testimonies that God gives to you as his child. Now, what is the meaning of testimony? I said, testimony comes as a result of something new. You don't testify about something that is old. Now, if somebody calls me and I give a testimony that God helped me, healed me last year or three years ago, now, if I'm sharing the same testimony this year, people that have heard about the testimony will say, well, we've heard this before. This is not new. But testimony has to do with something that is new. Praise God. Something that is new. Something that, is, that calls the attention of people around you. Something that draws people to you. That is what testimony is. Now, if you look at it, until we forget the whole things, the new things called testimonies will not spring forth. We will not enjoy the good things that God has planned for us in this year. Now, I believe that God has something special for us this year. Because the Bible says the things of God are new every morning. The things of God are new every morning. That is why I believe that God has something special for you this year. Something so special. Now, if you look at the scripture, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you look at uh, verse 17b, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17b, the Bible says, whole things shall pass away. And behold, all things shall become new. 
Now, until you allow old experiences to pass away, new things cannot come. That is why the scripture admonishes us that we should learn to forget about the old things that has passed away. Now, God is asking us to forget about it. Because if you don't, it will affect what God wants to do for us in this year, 2022. We must learn to forget about it totally. Until we learn to go, let go of old ways, old dealings, old relationships, old spouse and businesses that has caused us havoc. We have to let it go. We cannot see the best of God until we let go. If you're in a relationship and something happened, and maybe the lady or the man decided to go, and as he has left, you let it go. You take it out of your mind. Because if you don't, it will affect you. Not only your health, it will affect you spiritually. If you have lost a contract, and you've tried all your best to, to get it back, and you could not get it back, or you set up a business and it's not doing well and the things are so down and you know, I've tried. The Bible says we should look ahead for better things. It says forget about those ones. Because the time that you are using to mend the old one, the good ones will begin to pass. That is why God admonishes us by saying we should let go of the past experience that we have. And I pray to God today. That God will give you the grace to let go in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's see Numbers chapter 11 verse 5. Now, I want you to listen to what the children of Israel says. Numbers chapter 11 verse 5. The Bible says, They remembered the fish which were ate freely in Egypt, the cucumber, the melons, and the onions, and the garlic. Now, let, let me give you uh, the scenario of what really happened here. When God visited the children of Israel, God told them, through Moses, I'm taking you to a place that is better than where you are. I'm taking you to a land that I promised your forefathers, Abraham, I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with milk, that is flowing with honey. They embrace that word. They say, wow, we're going to a new place. Now, when they were going to the new place, they were confronted with challenges. They were confronted with problems. And they decided to remember what has happened in the past. That is when they begin to make this comment that they made here in Numbers chapter 11, verse 5. The Bible said, they said to themselves, we remember the goodies. Even though Egypt is not that good for them. Even though Egypt, they suffer the lot. Even though in Egypt, they walk without getting paid. But because at that time when they left Egypt, they could not get those things that they were enjoying, they begin to murmur and begin to look back and tell themselves, I prefer to be in Egypt than go home. Now, most of the time, when we make that decision to move forward in life, and we are still going through one or two challenges, there is this notion that we have that the, 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 the past is better than where we are right now. And the reason we said that is because we cannot see what God has in plan or has in store for us in the future or ahead. That is why Apostle Paul from the scripture we read, he said, I want to forget all those things. I want to move forward. I want to press on because there is something far more better ahead of me than what I left behind. Now, the children of Israel never saw ahead of them. They were seeing their past. And that is why the Bible said they murmur against God and many of them were destroyed in the wilderness. You see, when we begin to believe that the past is better than where we are doing, we are making a, where we are going, we are making the greatest mistake in our lives. That is why we children of God must know that God has a better thing for us ahead, that we should forget about the challenges and about the mistakes we make in the past and move forward for the better things that God has for us. Glory be to God. 
They could not see what God has in future. Now, when we now say divine, you know, we have been talking about testimony. Now, what is the meaning of divine? Now, divine means something of God. Something from God. Or something like God. Praise God. Now, when we now ask, say, divine testimony, when you bring it together, it simply means that the things that God will do for us and for you this year is something that you don't need to labor much for. Praise God. Because it is divine. It is the testimony will come as a result of God, as a result of from God's help, as a result from, uh, from, the, from the hands of the Lord. It's not going to come from you. It's going to come from God. That is why it's divine. Now, the testimony that is beyond you, the testimony that is far greater than you, that is what we are expecting this year. Glory be to God. Now, let me give you an example. In 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible said, He will guide the feet of the saints, but the wicked shall be silenced in darkness. For by strength, no man shall prevail. Now, what is God saying there? God is saying that it is not by your strength. It's going to be by divine test. It's going to come in a divine way. In a way that you will not have to struggle about it. In a way that it is God that will undo that situation, undo that relationship, undo that business, undo that marriage. It's going to be divine. It will, it will not be from you. Now, when I was praying on the, the last day of last year, 2024, and I was asking God, I said, Lord, you know what has happened. And from January or last year till January, uh, December 2021, you know the economy of nations crumbled and a lot of people are, are, are really down because of the situation that has happened because of this pandemic. Now, Lord, what are you going to do in this matter? Because many of your children are down spiritually. Because of the encounter they had in the year 2020, 2021. And this is when I was reading the Bible and I heard that word, divine. In other words, I'm, I am going to compensate you divinely this year that you don't need to labor much before you get results. Because I am going to intervene into the matters of our lives. Glory be to God. Now, God is saying, I am come to, I'm coming in divinely to empower you to become what you want to become. And I think that that, that area, I, someone needs to say a very good praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He said, because this year, by strength, you cannot overcome. But by God, you are already an overcomer. Hallelujah. Now, look at what the Bible equally says. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible said, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Praise God. It is the one that enables you to get wealth. Now, that is the divine power of God coming in there. I'm the one that gives you the wisdom to get wealth. I am the one that channeled the opportunity to come to you. I'm the one that make the right people that will help you to fulfill your destiny to come your way. I have seen, I've heard of so many testimonies from people around me that said they never knew what happened. Somebody saw them on Facebook and decided to get in touch with them. And they had a chat about a business that they can do. And they said, fine, in your country... I can see that uh, this particular product is good in your country. But in my own country, we have it in abundance. Why don't you let us strike a deal? I will send it to, to the country. You will prepare it down. Then we, share, we split the gain. 
and the person was doing well. That is God divinely blessing somebody. And it's going to happen this year for you. Because this year, God is going to cause your testimonies to be full in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this year is a year of divine, divine intervention, divine surprises, divine testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the one that gives you power to get wealth. Hallelujah. This year is going to be divine. God is going to lay hands, stretch forth his hands, and touch that situation that you are passing through. Now, let me show you in the Bible some divine ways that God does his things. Now, I know you know this story in John chapter 9, verse 3. John chapter 9, verse 3. You can, you can start from John chapter 9, verse 1. You can read it, but we won't be able to read it, but I'll just, um, just paraphrase what happened in that, in that part of the scripture. The Bible said it's a story of a man that was born blind. And uh, Jesus and his disciples were passing through. And the disciple asked Jesus a question. They said, this man, is it the parents that seen or him? And that is the reason that brought the blindness to him. But Jesus said something. That I want you to understand today, Jesus said, not his parents, not him, but for me, he said, for the name of the Lord to be glorified. In other words, for me to show the world that whatsoever situation that you cannot handle, the divine way, divine power of God can undo that situation. And the Bible says, Jesus went to the man and healed the man. Now, that man has been there for some time. He has been there for a long time. Because the Bible says he was born blind. And the Bible went on to say he's a man. That means I'm talking about something of 30 to 40 years old. And he has been in the same situation and no doctors could help him. But when God brings in the supernatural, the divine way, divine power into the situation of this man, the man did not labor or do anything. It was the divine power of God that brought the divine testimony that brought the healing of the eyes of this man. When God decided to come into a matter, it turns liability into an asset. When God decided to step into your situation, without your effort, God changes around. Why? Just to glorify his name. To show you his divine power and what he's capable of doing. There are so many stories in the Bible. So many stories in the Bible. That God divinely intervened that brought out a divine testimony. Let me give you another example. You'll find another example in Mark chapter 5. If you read from verse 25 to 27. Mark chapter 5, 25 to 27. It talks about a woman with an issue of blood. The Bible said in another pronouncement, in another, uh, in another Bible verse, it said she has a situation of flow of blood. Now, if you look at the situation of this woman in Mark chapter 5, verse 26, the Bible gave us an idea how much this woman has spent in her problem. Now, the Bible went on to say this in verse 26. The Bible said, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather she grew worse. You see, there are some situations in life that when we try all that we could and we could not get any result out of it, we need the divine power of God to intervene. The Bible says about the woman here, it said she has spent all that she had. The doctors have promised her so many uh, times, we're going to handle your situation. All you need to do right now is to pay up. And she paid. But the Bible said it got to an extent she lost everything that she had until she had a divine visitation. The Bible says she heard that Jesus was passing. 
and she pressed herself out of faith. She told herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, all I need is a touch and I know I will be healed. Because the divine power was present there. And you know the history. You know the rest of the story. The Bible says she touched the hem. And after she touched it, Jesus felt power coming out of him. And Jesus looked down and said, who touched me? She was afraid. And the disciples said, how can you be saying who touched you? There's a lot of crowd here. There's a lot of people that are pressing. He said, somebody touched me because power has been drained from me. And she saw her. And she said, be of good cheers, woman. Your faith has healed you. It was a divine thing. Because this woman has gone so far, checking all the places she could go, looking for help somewhere, and where there is no help, but the divine power of God brought about divine testimony. That is why I'm believing God for you this year. You are going to have great testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's so many stories here. Look at the man that was healed by the pool of Bethsaida. The man has been suffering for 38 years. The Bible said the only thing that they, 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 their mind tells them is that the only way you can be healed is by just diving into the pool when the angel has stirred up the water. And when Jesus saw this man, and the Bible said he knew that this man has been there for a very long time. And he asked the man, do you want to be healed? Even, the, even though the man doesn't understand exactly what Jesus meant, he began to tell Jesus, I need divine healing. I need divine testimony. That is why I've been sitting here for 38 years waiting for a time an angel will come and trouble the waters. And the first person that gets there gets an instant healing. But any time that I want to go there, somebody step upon me and get there before me. But Jesus healed the man right there. Divine testimony. That is what I'm believing God for you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is what I'm believing God for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to be rest assured that God is mindful of the things that you passed through last year. God understands all the challenges that you went through. God knows your problem. He knows the suffering that you went through. God knows the oppression that you went through. God knows the confusion that you went through. God knows how much you have lost due to this pandemic. God knows them all. Because God is mindful of you. God cannot forget you because you are his sons and you are his daughters. Now look at what the Bible says here. In Psalm 8, if you read from verse 4 and 5, Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5, Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5, look at what the Bible says here. It said, what is man that you are mindful of him? Glory be to God. That is uh, Pete, uh, David trying to express the kind of love that God has for you and I. He said, who is the man that you are so mindful of him? The son of man that you pay him a visit. Now, David looked deep and he said, God, the almighty himself, we take time to come from the throne of heaven and decided to have fellowship with man. My God, what love is that? Now, what I'm saying is this. Now, in nations of the world, we have leaders, we have presidents, and we have kings in some nations of the world. Now, if you know the itinerary of all these kings or leaders, they don't just come down from their presidential villa and just go by the street and meet a common man and shake his hands and begin to have conversation with them. They don't do that. Most of the time, they move with people of their own caliber. Now, David was so surprised 
and was so moved by the love that God has for you. He said, who is man that you are so mindful of him? He said, who is man that you are always, is always in your mind? You think about him on a daily basis. Who is man? Who are we? We are nothing before you. But you still take time to pay us a visit. Or he said, who is the son of man that you visit? The reason you are alive today is because you receive a visitation from God. That came to your bedside and wake you up to his glory. Now David was moved by the passion that God has for man. Now in verse 5 he said, For you have made him a little lower than the angel, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. That's David describing the kind of respect and honor that God has bestowed upon you. He said he has made you a little less than his angels. God doesn't pay his angels a visit. No, God doesn't do that. Even though they dwell in his presence. But God takes time to visit you. Glory be to his name forever. It takes his time to pay you a visit. That is why when you are praying and you are you're on your knees and you are crying to God, his presence is there. Remember what the scripture said. It said, where two or three of you are gathered in my name, I am there. In other words, anytime you come to church, anytime you have fellowship with your children and your, your spouse, anytime you have fellowship with your friends, anytime you stand by the corner of your friends and you are having a quiet prayer, the Bible says that God is there. Praise God. I'm praying for somebody here today. God in his infinite mercy will stand by you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And God said in verse 6, he said, You have been given dominion over the works of God's hands. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, if you read to the tail hand, the Bible said after God has created all the things he has created, he said you should have dominion upon all that he has created, upon the fish of the sea, Upon the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, he said, I'm giving them for you to have dominion over them. Glory be to God. That is the extent of love of God towards you. And our God is so mindful of whatsoever situation that you are passing through. That is why God loves you so much. That is why God cares for you so much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That is why God this year has to visit you. And that's my prayer for you. That God will divinely visit you this year. And you will receive a divine testimony. The kind of testimony that you don't need to labor much for. Is going to come your way this year in Jesus name. Now look at what the Bible said in Psalm 103. Psalm 103. 103 verse 14. The Bible says, for he knoweth our frame, he remember that we are dust. He knows who you are. He knows your strength. He knows your capability. He knows the challenges that you are passing through. He knows everything. He's the all-knowing God. He knows everything beyond what you think he knows. He knows when you are going through challenges. He knows when things are not right with you. He knows when you are happy. He knows everything. Look at what the Bible said to encourage us in Psalm 115 verse 12. Psalm 115 verse 12. Psalm 115 verse 12. He said, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. Praise God. God will bless you. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Heron. You are the spiritual Israel. Now that God is referring to you that is going to bless you. He's mindful of what you are passing through. Now lastly, God asked me to tell you in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16. Isaiah 49 verse 16. The Bible said, see, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. 
You see, uh, he said, your wars are continually before me. Now, I, 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 I tried what the scripture says here. No matter how you try in a day, you have to look at your palm. If you are taking your bath and you put your, your soap dish in your hands, you have to look at your palm. If you are shaking somebody's hands, especially this time of, of the COVID, you just give the person a fist bump, and after you've done it, you go to your restroom and wash your hands. You look at your hands. In other words, God is saying, as many times as you can see your hands on every on daily basis, that is as many times that you can see your hands. That is how as many that I can see your name engraved in my hands. In other words, no matter, even though God cannot forget, but any time he looks at his palm and sees your name, he remembers. He's mindful of you. He's so mindful of you. Hallelujah. And he says, your walls are continually before me. In other words, I see you on daily basis. I see all the things that is happening. I see you on daily basis. That's what God is saying. I see what is happening to you. I see the, pre- the pain that you are passing through. He said, I see them. He said, why? They are always before me. Glory be to his name. Thank you, Father. Because you are a child in his hands. You are a child in the hands of the Lord. Glory be to God. You are a child in his hands. Now look at what the Bible said in Luke chapter 11 verse 13. Luke chapter 11 verse 13. It said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit for those who ask him? In other words, the Bible is saying, God is so mindful of you that you cannot compare God to your earthly parents. There is something that I've noticed in our earthly parents. They love their children. And they, want to, and they love to give the best for their children. But God is comparing our earthly parents or our fathers to himself. Even with our generosity and our love towards our children, God has said it's nothing to be compared to what he has for you. He said the, the love that he has for you is far greater than the one that your parents has for you. Hallelujah. He said it's far greater than that. He said it's far greater than that. You see, I'm always happy when I read the scripture and it reminds me of the love that God has for me. And the same love he has for you also. Look at what the Bible said in Psalm 27 verse 10. Still talking about the love of God. That is why he's promising you a divine testimony this year. He said, when your father and your mother forsake forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. In other words, even those that have no parents, those that condition took their parents away, God is saying, even though you don't have a parent, it's still there for you. I've seen people that succeeded in life without their parents before. Because God took took charge of taking care of them. When your friends, your parents, your spouse forget you, God said, I will not forget you. Glory be to God. He said, when they forget you, I will not forget you. Now, I want you to see Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. I'll be rounding up now. I'll be rounding up now. Isaiah 49, verse 15. Now, look at what the Bible says. It said, can a woman forget a nursing child and not have compassion on the son of his womb? Surely, they may forget. But the Bible said that God said, yet... I will not forget you. This is your assurance this year, 2022. Whatsoever situation that you pass through, he said, the Bible says, God said, even though everything forgets, I will not forget you. 
In other words, I will give you everything that you have lost in the year 2021. I will give you solution to that business. I will give you ideas to achieve all those things that you have lost. I will give you the wisdom. I will give you direct contact. I will send people that will help you, divine helpers. I will send them to you that will assist you in all the challenges of life. Then he now went on to say, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, I love this scripture. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, concerning the challenges of this year, God asked me to tell you this word. It says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But we, in everything by prayers and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He said, be anxious for nothing. I love that scripture so much. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. What does it mean? It means don't be worried for nothing. Hallelujah. He said, don't be fearful for nothing. Don't be troubled for nothing. Don't be apprehensive for nothing. Don't be agitated for nothing. Don't be distressed for nothing. He said, but the, situation, the solution to it, he said, everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, he said, then tender your request unto God. Now, God is saying this year we should pray more. We should cry to him more. God said this year we should make supplications more. Praying for the church, praying for the nations of the world, praying for our extended family. He said after we've done that, we should learn to give thanks to God. It's very important. Thanking God in every situation that we meet ourselves. He said when we do that, God said that we arise on our behalf. I leave this word with you. And that is what the scripture just admonishes. us. It said, be anxious for nothing. I was hearing from the news uh, about a particular man that says, this year, he said, uh, the, the, the COVID or the pandemic will increase. That is enough to cause fear into people. But God said, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. He said, pray. Supplications. With thanksgiving. He said, make your request be known unto him. We don't need to be fearful of what is happening. Let us learn to trust God and trust his word. And when we do that, we will end up in victory and divine testimonies. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And with that, I would like to pray with you. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. My Father, I want to thank you on behalf of all your children that is listening to me this Sunday. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done for them. Thank you for all your, the protection. Thank you for caring for them. Thank you for supporting them. Thank you, Father, for upholding them. Thank you for give, bringing them to this year safely. Lord, we say be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every of your children listening to me here today. Lord, I ask for a visitation that will bring about a divine testimony, divine enthronement in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I lift up my voice and I join my faith with the faith of all your children that will be watching and are listening to me right now. Lord, that before this year got to the middle, you will answer and you will surprise them in Jesus' name. I pray for as many that are sick in their body right now, receive your healing. I pray for as many that believe God for businesses. I pray for wisdom for you. 
I pray for marriages that are having problems to be reconciled and to unite together again. I pray for as many that are in the hospital right now. I declare your healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you've answered us. But adventure, Father, if you come today, please count us worthy. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. Glory be to God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in today. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. Please, what I want you to do today is this. Please look around. Make sure you study the word of God. And in case you don't understand, get in touch with us in the church. We'll be able to explain to you. God bless you. And have a wonderful Sunday. Goodbye. Shalom, beloved. Hallelujah. Let us now prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion. We are doing this in remembrance of our God, Jesus Christ, sacrifice on the cross. In remembrance of His love to you and to me. So, before we come to Him and having this Holy Communion, taking part in this Holy Communion, let's just come with the right heart. Let's just come with the right manner. Let us be at peace with God right now. Be at peace with others also. And be at peace with yourself. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. And open up your hearts. Lord, we are coming right now, taking part in this Holy Communion. We are doing this, Lord, in remembrance of you. How great is your love towards us. How great is your loving kindness towards us, Lord. So bless your children, I pray. Bless each and every one of us, I pray. That as we take part in this Holy Communion, I pray that even miracles shall happen. Healing and restoration shall happen to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, beloved, let us just open our hearts. Like I said, be at peace with God. Just pour out your heart to God. If God is reminding you of the things that you said, thought, and done in the past, and it has grieved God. Just be at peace with God. And if you have done, you have done something wrong to your fellow men and women, just ask for forgiveness and convey forgiveness. Be at peace with others. And be at peace with yourself. We know we have done things in the past that we regretted. But if God can forgive you, we can also you can also forgive yourself. Lord, I pray for your children. This Holy Communion symbolizes how great is your love towards us. That you have died. You have shed your blood for our sins. For the forgiveness of sins. And your body was wounded, was bruised for our healing. Lord, I pray again, as we take part in this Holy Communion, do something new, do something great, do something miraculous to your people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us be ready for the Holy Communion, beloved. For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Let us lift up the bread high to him. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, it. this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't the bread that we broke and partake is our fellowship and communion with the body of Christ Jesus? Amen. Let's take it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us now lift up the cup high to him. And in the same manner, Jesus also took cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't this cup upon which we give thanks is our fellowship and communion with the blood of Christ Jesus? Amen. 
Let's drink it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice. Just give Him thanks. Give Him thanks. Hallelujah. Jesus, You are worthy of our praise and worship. You are worthy of our adoration. Thank You for dying for us. Thank You for Your blood shed for us. Thank You for the healing. Thank You for the salvation in Your name. Thank You, Lord. Lord, I pray for Your children wherever they are. Bless them. Bless every family. Bless every husband and wife, every parent and child, Lord. Bless them all. Bless your church. Bring us, draw us closer to you each day. And this is my prayer these days, Lord, that you pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us. Pour out your spirit, Lord, and transform us all that will never be the same again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We receive the blessings. We receive the restoration, the healing, miracles in our life, in our job, in our businesses, in our family, in our ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To you belong all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Let us now prepare our hearts for the blessings. Remember always, beloved, that God loves you and me so very much. That he, will love, that he will bless you, that He will keep you, that He will make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, that our Lord Jesus Christ will lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. May the grace and abundant blessings from our, from our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our faithful friend, intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones today until Jesus Christ comes again even throughout eternity forever and ever in Jesus mighty name and all the people of God say amen amen God bless you happy Sunday and see you again next week amen